Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Are we here, 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 here? God, God, God. Our scripture today has a lot of twos in it. Second Timothy chapter 2, 1, 2, October 2, 2000, 2022. Oh well. Timothy had written to Paul and he was a little intimidated perhaps because of the amount of people he was suddenly pastor to. However, Paul writes back, Timothy, my dear son, be strong through the grace that God gives you in Christ Jesus. You have heard me teach things that have been confirmed by many reliable witnesses. Now, teach these truths to other trustworthy people who will be able to pass them on to others. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, Claire, Stephen, and Diane. What a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful song. The children's message, Anne, talked about walking. How many of you have been walking someplace and you tripped and fell down? Has that ever happened to anyone? <laughs> What is the first thing you did when you hit the ground? <laughs> Looked around to see who saw you, right? I don't know how many times I have done that. And I wonder who saw that. Well, today we're going to talk in our Leading Generously series about capacity what others see in our lives and what we can do to help others share the love of Christ. Will you pray with me? Lord, open our hearts. May your Holy Spirit lead us, guide us, teach us. This day, Lord, I pray that the words I share will be lifted up with honor and glory to you. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. We've been on this five-week series. This is the fourth week, and we've been talking about what it means to lead generous lives. Now, I, I told the, the first service that, you know, the fall, the pastor always has to do a tithing sermon, a generosity sermon. We need your money. We're building the budget for 2023, and, and we just have to have your money. Have you experienced that over the years? In 18 years of pastoral ministry, I've never once asked for money. Leading generously is all about tuning our heart into what God would have us do. To look at leading a life the generosity is not about your pocketbook. It's about how you share the love of Christ with others. The first week we talked about promises. The Bible is filled with God's promises given to bless us. And then we asked if we trust God's promises, have we planted the seeds of God's promises in others. The second week we talked about legacy versus legend. I'm, I'm hearing this week about the goat. Have you heard the goat? The greatest of all time. The goat. Football players, they talk about the goat. Who is the greatest? Home run hitters. We're talking about the goat. Aaron Judge, will he hit 62 and be the greatest of all time? Are we building a legacy? Or are we becoming a legend? The goat is about becoming the legend. But are they leaving a legacy? Week three was about ambition. Ambition focused on our wants Building a kingdom for ourselves is disappointing in God's eyes. But ambition that helps to build the kingdom 
of God, God smiles upon. This week, our video is going to look at what it means to have capacity to help share Christ and help others to share Christ. Those of you at home, I'm sorry we can't show the video online, but we'll be back in just a few minutes. Would you please share the video? Capacity. It's about passing our faith to the next generation. When I was little and as I've grown up, the truth that is always spoken is that we are just one generation away from losing our Christian heritage and faith. And I think it's becoming more evident as we see the social media uprise and as we see so much of the world coming in to disrupt the truth of God's Word. The Bible was passed down from generation to generation by oral tradition. They told the stories of God's people from generation to generation until God chose men and women to write it down, to record it in what we now have as God's Word. But it seems that today we want to take God's word and modify it just a little bit to make it politically correct or to make it fit my view of what I want. Well, capacity is about sharing God's word, the truth, unaltered, given by God. Capacity. How many of you have told stories that eventually come back to you and it's not the same story you told the first time? Capacity is about teaching God's Word to our children in truth and honesty. Will God's story end with our generation? Paul wrote a letter to Timothy. You have heard me teach things that have been confirmed by many reliable witnesses. Now teach these truths to other trustworthy people who will be able to pass them on to others. Sunday after Sunday you listen to me preach, tell you. Do you ever check out what I say? Do you ever open God's Word and make sure Pastor Barry's telling you the truth? That's so important, isn't it? Because I'm not a scholar. I don't know much of anything. But I'm faithful to share God's Word, to share the truth. And you must be faithful to open and to read God's Word and to hold me accountable. Paul is building capacity in Timothy to share the gospel. Now Paul is not boasting about what he has done. He's stating a fact. And then he's saying to Timothy, if not you, then who? Do you hear that in our generation today? If we don't stand for the truth, then who will? If we allow the truth of God's word to be altered and misused, and then who? Who will stand for the truth? 1 Corinthians 11, 1, follow my example as I follow the example of Christ. Leading generous lives means leaving a legacy of truth and scripture. Who are we following? Who do we look to as an example to live by, to look up to, the world or Jesus Christ? What do others see in our lives that will draw them to Jesus? Last week we talked about ambition. Are we building the kingdom of God or are we busy building the kingdom of this world? 
Do others see Jesus in you? Luke 21, 1 through 4 said, While Jesus was in the temple, he watched the rich people dropping their gifts in the collection box. Then a poor widow came by and dropped in two small coins. I tell you the truth, Jesus said, this poor widow has given more than all the rest of them. For they have given a tiny part of their surplus. But she, poor as she is, has given everything she has. An example that Jesus gives of a woman who quietly led the example of a generous life. She had two little coins. They weren't going to make any difference in the kingdom of God. They weren't going to pay the heat bill. They weren't going to pay the pastor. They weren't going to do anything. But that's not what Jesus saw. Jesus saw the attitude of her heart. She gave what she had. While others only gave a tiny bit of their surplus. Others saw the woman. Others saw a poor, poor woman with nothing and said she has no value. But others saw the woman and her heart. In the video, Lance saw something in Frank that he wanted. They both were climbing the corporate ladder. They were both at the top of the business, yet Frank had something that Lance wanted. Teach me what you have. Little did he know he'd end up at the soup kitchen serving those less fortunate. Now he wonders if he really wants what Frank has. Let me write a check, Lance said. Ooh, how many of us have done that? I do not want to get my hands dirty, but I will write a check. And Frank asked, how about giving your time? Frank said, some will leave behind a mountain of money, but how much better it would be to leave behind a movement of people giving themselves wholeheartedly for the kingdom of God. Capacity is all about helping others see the importance of leading a generous life. Alicia brought her little boy, Ben, to meet Ray. Now you remember last week Ray we saw was a pastor of an up and coming church. A man of God and his wife died. And Ray failed God. He tried to put himself in his work. He tried to make up for the hurt in his life. And the church set him aside and Ray walked away from God. But even more, he walked away from his daughter. And now, we see that Alicia brings her son, Ben. And Ben looks up to Ray like a father. Wow, that's powerful, isn't it? Ray is touching a, a young boy's life when he failed his own daughter. Together they said, believe in the seed. The seed is the promises of God. Ray had yellow t-shirts made to represent the sun. S-O-N. That brings life. Ray is disturbed in his heart. He knows that he, he needs God to bring healing in his life that he might reconnect with his daughter. You know, sometimes life is hard. It's messy. Capacity is when we pass on an example of gracious generosity where we are helping our brothers and sisters become the generous people that God made them to be. Capacity is not about our willing to, willingness and ability to give our dollars. It's about giving our hearts and our lives to teach other. Frank and Ray are both facing decisions that will change their lives. 
Lance asked Frank about the priorities of his life. And Frank said, if you want to know how to set a priority in your life, find a way to increase the capacity of others and quit worrying about your own. The reality is, in the Christian life, we must decrease so that Christ may increase. You see, it's not about me. It's not about us. It's about us being the hands of Christ to help others share Christ's love. Almost 20 years ago now, I was preparing to come into the ministry. And I had a wonderful man at, at Millbank Central Church who was there on an interim. His name was Dwight Meyer. And Dwight said, Barry, he said, you're going to become a pastor. And they're going to appoint you to churches. Little churches, middle-sized churches, big churches. And Dwight said, Barry, that church will never be yours. And I said, what? I want the church. I want to be in charge. I want to be the pastor. He said, no. You are there as a servant to lead them to be prepared for the next generation of Christians. That was the greatest thing I was ever taught. That the church is not mine. The church is you. The church is your hands. It was your moms and dads or grandpas and grandmas or great grandpas and grandmas. This church exists because we pass our heritage from generation to generation just as Paul taught Timothy. It's not about the pastor. The pastors come and go, how many pastors have you had in 130 or 40 years? You can't even remember them all. Pastors come and go, but the Word of God is rooted in you and in this church. I must decrease so that Christ may increase. Who sees Christ in your life? Family? Friends? Co-workers? Strangers? That's the reality of capacity is sharing your faith in a way that others see Jesus Christ in all that you do. Amen. Next week we'll finish our series with a message called Essence. We'll find out the essence of Frank and Ray. Will you pray with me? Lord, we see that our lives are sometimes filled with the capacity of the world. How much more can I get? How much more can I build? What is my legend? Lord, help us to see that we are to leave a legacy. Amen and amen. We stand for our song and then we will share communion together.